something just floated, a little piece of fluff or something. It floated up here. It looked like a bug. It could have been a tiny bug, I guess. But it kind of looked like a piece of a down from my coat or something. It just defied gravity, took off into the air. <clears throat> Whoa. Ready, folks? Uh, I think they break apart. Wish I had my PowerShot A20. That's an old camera. Took great video though. It's all about the lens. But my, uh, this is just a airplane Morgellons update. Hmm. Sometimes I feel like a targeted individual, but then I, uh, I, uh, realize that everybody's targeted. It just, not everybody realizes it, but that's only in a, you know, a broad sense. There are, there are people targeted specifically by, you know, Agents, let's call them. Subcontractors for the government, most likely. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. I think I've, uh, shook the one-on-ones off of me a while back, because, uh, when I was living at Dan's house and I was really sick, I just did not give a fuck and I fucking let anybody know at any moment and fucking and I catch somebody outside, they were fucking better run. <laughs> at least if, you know, at the wrong time. If it was airplane 30. But I'm feeling a lot better now. I don't know how much time's on here, so. I'll try not to ramble. <sighs> Got our kin trailed out. What would be some little clouds are now hazed out into kin trail. Half, half cloud, half haze. <laughs> this is the Lewis. I think it's the Lewis server. Probably named after Lewis from Lewis and Clark. What was his name Meriwether? I think it was Meriwether Lewis. Meriwether Lewis. Ding, that's right. Uh, I'll take <laughs> historical facts for uh, how much? 400, Alex? Oh, this water is going to be cold. Yep, it's cold. My feet are doing so much better now. I'm, uh, I'm on day nine of my potassium iodide supplement regimen. And I noticed immediately the, the ringing in my ears or in my head that uh, there's a constant level and then there's a level that happens when you go near a power substation or under the power lines or or a plane flies over of course you can't forget the planes they're the most frequent cause of uh, you know the Morgellon symptoms there's a direct connection though between electrical fields and the onset of Morgellon be it the hairs or the crawling sensations or being attacked by bugs or whatever, you know, pick a pick an issue. And my potassium iodide seems to be working. I uh, I haven't even you know documented all the different uh, techniques I've tried over the last couple of years. Mud baths, earth grounding. 
um, muriatic acid bath, like a cup of muriatic acid and a whole bathtub full of water. Soak in it for about, I don't know, half hour or however long you want to. Just rinse off well afterwards and your skin will, the hair, your hair and your skin will begin to overtake the stuff and start, and it will feel normal for a while. It won't stay because these people that are saying there's a cure for Morgellons, you know, here's a 100% cure, are mistaken, just to be nice. Not all of them are, are uh, ill-intentioned, I'm sure. And some of them are just fraught to, you know, create, they, they realize people are catching on about it, that it's real, that it's really strange that it's not acknowledged by the established medicine. It, it, obviously, these people they know are, are suffering from it, you know, despite what they may think, you know, their family members and friends. But, uh, ah, I got lost now. Yeah, it's real. So, potassium iodide has been working. I've been uh, neem oil and potassium iodide. I made a shampoo with a mixture of Dawn dish soap, potassium iodide, neem oil extract. And I think it had a little bit of Gojo because I mixed it in the Gojo bottle, but I don't know about the Gojo. And uh, actually, that cream hand cleaner that you get at like Harbor Freight. The, the, the creamy kind, not the, with the pumice, but the other kind. That will clean your skin really well, your hair, your face, your neck. That stuff does a number on the Morgellons, so that works really well. But for, you know, what feels like my own body chemistry being able to overtake the Morgellons without having to actively put something on all the time or, you know, use... Methyl alcohol works great too. It rinses it right out of your skin. Uh, but methyl alcohol is, you know, not everybody wants to pour it on their head and let it rinse off and shake it off and, and you know, wait a minute and then wipe it off with a towel. But if you do that, the towel will be black. It will get all this dark gray metallic looking dust will come out of your skin in the alcohol. And the towel will, you'll, you'll retain it on the towel. You'll see what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Is thing still going? It is. It's a little whirlpool that keeps appearing right there. I kind of subscribe to the Electric Universe theory too, you know? It's, uh, I mean, some of these science concepts are beyond the scope of you know, regular people doing too, too highly detailed of experiments about it, but, uh, but that set aside, I mean, an atom's electric and electricity and magnetism are, are, uh, they're not interchangeable, they're different things, but you, you pretty much don't see one without the other. You see magnetism without electricity, actually. You don't see electricity without magnetism. So, in the hierarchy of uh, energy sources in the universe, I'd have to say that it was the magnetism that ranked higher than the electricity. And therefore, you know, at the core, the, the energy must, uh, at this time, until something even uh, deeper comes up, it must be magnetism magnetism at the at the heart of uh, the atom if you want to call it that whatever you define a little ball of energy as could just be a little ball could be a little cube for all those devil worshipers out there it could be a little uh, uh, tetrahedron that three-sided pyramid those things will interlock together and make all kinds of shapes too has something to do with sacred geometry and what they platonic uh, shapes, something solids, something like that. I'm just a uh, little stone spitballing it, but this is my Morgellons update. Smoking weed helps too, especially with the uh, uh, I don't know, the seriousness. The mental aspect of the Morgellons, because it'll 
get on your nerves. You'll get tired of it. It'll be, you know, years have gone by and, and, and it, you remember back on how bad it was just recently and how close to death you were and whether it be, you know, from whatever's happening to you or, or you just can't take it anymore, you're going to jump off the bridge, okay? Uh, you know, if you have more gallons, you're at one of those stages and, you know, or you're about to be. <laughs> Congratulations, uh, rest of America. Uh, you know what? I better end this video while I'm ahead. I just stopped the memory card, but it doesn't hard to tell me. It doesn't tell me exactly where. And how many minutes it's going to have. It's just minutes elapsed. Usually when a, a bug comes flying into my face, a plane's coming. But no, that sounds crazy. That doesn't mean a plane's coming just because a bug flies in your face. Birds are squawking now too. That usually means a plane's coming as well. Oh yeah, my, my ears are ringing. They're ringing somewhere about here. Maybe right here on the side of your head between the ear and the brain. That's kind of where the ringing seems to be. It's also the area where the fungus under your skin, it lives in your glands, probably, and sends tendrils out through your skin, and these fibers are so thin, you can't really see them. They're, they're like hairs, you know, millions, billions of them, I don't know, millions at least, and they can be burnt, and smoke will, uh, you know, they will smoke, and it will smell like burned metal. It's in some of my videos. I should probably do another one on it because I'm getting braver. I'm getting more brave. But, uh, and it grows out your skin. That's the, one of the end results. And then, you know, there's more about the hairs and fibers themselves that grow out after that. But in a gist, that's one of the, the biggest issues with it. That and it, uh, the fibers that grow out the end are, you know, out of, they're white and silver hairs, basically. Sometimes they're red or gold tinted, which I get a lot of those too, and that's when they're fresh, I guess, and then they want to turn white. But uh, they can be burned off. That's one way to know they're there. And it relieves the skin tension. It's like, I realize I'll, I'm tensed up all the time, and it will have to do with, uh, you know, sometimes it's just me being tense. People get tense, but uh, sometimes it's like... Uh, some unconscious forces, you know, working on my subconscious and to physically tense up. I realize, you know, my hand was clenched or something, or my face, or my forehead was pinched like that. And, and it gets tiring. It's, you know, it's totally uh, conceivable to induce that state of tension on people using microwaves, non ionizing is a lie. There's no such thing as non-ionizing. There's rapid ionizing and slow ionizing. But there's not non-ionizing. Everything is ionizing. Even by their own mistaken theories of science, everything is ionizing. All the last little subatomic particles will fucking interact and burn themselves out and all the stars will die and the universe will end in a big freeze, as the Big Bang theorists say. <laughs> oh, excuse me. They should revise their theory. There's no such thing as a Big Bang. That's impossible. Something doesn't come from nothing. Does that prove the Creator? No, it doesn't. So, not even a, that's not a subject I even want to like address right now. But uh, the universe is cyclical. It's obviously cyclical. Everything that we can observe rotates around itself <laughs> or spins itself and rotates around other things and then rotates around something larger which in turn likely rotates around something even larger that would be the galaxy of the universe uh, or an atom or whatever uh, things grow in spirals in nature you know the Fibonacci thing and all that so check out Fibonacci and sacred ge uh, sacred gem no uh, sonic geometry. There's a video called Sonic Geometry, and uh, 
four two three uh, number connection is like the number is four thirty two. Our are uh, divisible into like all of these patterns of nature. I don't know, it's 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 uh, mathematical. I can't just do it justice to describe that. I've watched it several times. I'm trying to like learn the learn the the uh, ins and outs of it. You know, it has to do with the frequency of a tone generated and the sum of the angles of the geometric shapes, and then that tone reproducing the geometric shape in some medium. The waves have to travel through a medium. And all waves have similar uh, similar fit. Similar, yeah, the similar. Uh, form and function, and uh, so if we follow the rules of other waves, we can observe that all waves have to travel through a medium. No light coming to the earth is, you know, space can't be a vacuum because there'd be nothing for the light photon to travel through, because only the energy travels, just like I mean, on the water here, most of the water is staying in the same spot. But the energy is moving along. That's probably what moves your inner tube or your canoe down the river. It's, it seems as if the water's pushing you, but it's really the energy's pushing you, and you're in the water. That seems strange. Hmm, maybe it has to do with magnetism. Anyway, wow, I can't believe I haven't run out of time yet. All right, enough. Have a good day. You know, pray for rain. It's the only time it gets the spray out of the air. But you still got to deal with the microwaves. In fact, they, they, they ramp up the microwaves when it rains. When it's clouded and raining and real rain's coming down and the air gets cleared. They even, they even stop spraying once in a while when it gets rainy enough. But it's like, why bother? But not, you know, not lately. They, anytime there's any real clouds, they just haze them out, and the chemtrail haze stops them from raining. It absorbs all the moisture in them. That's why it's been really dry around here the last several years. Probably has to do with the slugs and the grasshoppers having disappeared, and most of the small little chirping birds that would be around having disappeared. I know it has to do with the sun not being out today, or hundreds of other days per year. You know, hundreds of days of sunlight are being robbed from you not, you know, in your lifetime, per year, more than that, 200 days of, 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 you know, sunshine, the sun shining on you, feels good, good for your eyes, good for your brain, good for your spirit, it's being robbed from everybody, every day, you know, some places the sun never shines, people move to the desert southwest, they say, because they want to get, get down there, and the sun, and, uh, or it's hot, and, most of them stay inside air conditioning anyway, and then you can't go outside there though. It's like sprayed silly every freaking day. It is here too, really. And I watched the transition happen from blue skies and you know, even when it was cloudy or and there were rain showers, they were here, there, around the uh, state in you know, Oregon and Washington, and you'd see like literally a rain cloud showering and the shadow from it stretched out across the land and the clouds look like gigantic structures just floating above you with a jet he's flying over right on the other side of the chemtrail layer anyway shit I could go on and on earth grounding though with some cold ass water oh shit but it's a good way to earth ground. It, uh, it's a good to uh, get you connected to the Earth's electrical grid. The air is uh, electric, and water is probably magnetic. Hmm. And uh, we're somewhere in the middle. Brilliant.